The satellite coordinates for tonight's press conferences are SES-3 forward slash 14K slot B9. A friendly reminder, cell phone should be turned off or put on silent, and flash photography is not permitted. Hammond Communications is providing the video feed, which will be available on the FTP site found on the NCAA Media Hub. Therefore, no video cameras are permitted, including cell phones or tablets. Thank you for your cooperation. Also, there is a five-minute cooling period for the winning team and a 15-minute cooling period for the non-advancing team. The locker rooms to talk to the players, not on stage, will be open for 30 minutes after the respective cooling periods have ended. A couple of reminders before we begin. We are going to start with an opening statement from the head coach, followed with questions for the student athletes. At the conclusion of the questions for the student athletes, they'll be dismissed. Then questions for the head coach can start. 
please raise your hand and someone will come around with the microphone. Please give your name and media affiliation. If you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. We, we will address questions in the room first and get to Zoom if time allows. Now, we'll start with the opening statement from NC State's head coach, Kevin Keats. Well, for those who are not here in, in Pittsburgh, um, I'll start off by, by saying that, man, Oakland is good as good as advertised. I mean, he is, Greg's done a great job with that program. And, um, you know, this is a tough, hard fought, you know, feel like a, a boxing match. Um, our, our guys were tremendous. Um, you know, it was a back and forth game. Um, we bent a little bit, but we never broke. Uh, we made big plays when we had to have big plays. Uh, I thought one of the biggest things for us is our character really shined through when we needed it. Um, you know, we stepped up in many ways. We had to get big stops. We had to get big baskets. Uh, at times, things weren't going our way. Um, and it just, it just shows you the growth of, you know, obviously this team and how they're locked in and their focus and, um, you know, their love for one another and how they play for one another. Um, it's been very impressive. This run that we, we've been on, it, it's really, really good. And it, all the credit has to go to the hard work that they put in. And obviously, they're receiving the uh, fruits of their label because of that. So excited about our, our guys. Um, you know, we're, we're going to the Sweet 16, guys. I mean, and, th and this was a team that, you know, most people didn't think we could even make it out of, um, you know, uh, D.C. last weekend or a couple weekends. I don't know how long it's been. But I'm proud of their fight. I'm proud of, um, you know, just who they are and how we have really grown as a team. Okay, representing NC State student athletes are DJ Burns Jr., Michael O'Connell, and Casey Morsell. Questions for student athletes? Back right. Matthew Theodros, Duquesne Duke. This question is for Michael or Casey. When DJ is dominating in the post getting a double double, how does that energize the team and get you guys motivated? Mike, you want to start? Yeah, I mean, I think it's huge for us, obviously, when he's down there doing his thing. Um, and we just keep feeding him. You know, we have, we have no problem with feeding him. And he brings energy, too. And he, you know, he's making great plays down there. And we, we can feed off that. And I, I think it's big time for us, honestly. When he's playing at all time high um, with confidence, it, we kind of just go along with it and help us up. Casey? Yeah, uh, when, um, when DJ gets going, it makes it easier um, for us guards on the perimeter. Um, he draws so much attention. And um, you know, all we could do is just kind of stay ready, stay ready to shoot, stay ready to make a play. Um, but you know, when he's going, um, we're very hard to stop. Tom, back right. Tom with his Associated Press. Uh, DJ, not that you needed any extra motivation, but you were having kind of a running commentary with the Oakland fans throughout most of the game. Did that fuel you a little bit? Yes, sir. Um, I I enjoy things like that. You know, that's what that's a part of the game. You know, the fans they're gonna really come at you, and you know, especially when they have a team like that with the capabilities that they have. Um, it, it's you got to talk. You know, you got to have some fun with it. Left middle. Michael Demers, Century Media. For all three, you guys. Obviously, you guys have been the underdog, and everyone has been cheering you guys on. It's definitely different tonight, as it seemed it was a predominantly Oakland crowd. What was the mindset going into the game about that and also during the game when you guys were, I guess, the lesser crowd, I guess. Mike, you want to take that? Yeah, I think going into the game, we don't really focus on, you know, who's the underdog or who's the higher seed or lower seed. It's kind of just the matchup at hand. Obviously, any team in here is a great team and they could have been higher or lower, we could have been higher or lower. It doesn't really matter, you know, just going into the game, we just take the matchup or per personal and uh, we kind of just go out there and play. And, I mean, we still we still had a lot of fans out there. The place was rocking, you know, when when we would get going and we were scoring and get stops like that. Place it was loud, so I didn't really even t couldn't even tell the difference if there was more or less fans. So, I mean, I, I'm, it was great to have our fans out there just supporting us along the way. Brooke, front right. Brooke Pryor, ESPN. DJ, you nodded when your coach said it was like a boxing match out there. Just what was the challenge that they were throwing at you in the post? And looked like you got really fired up after you hit the bucket and got fouled and just stared down the camera. What was going through your mind during that play? Uh, again, it's one of those games, you know, um, where I had the choice to, you know, get in my feelings about getting fouled or continue to play hard. Um, I just hit a point where I was like, I just got to ignore it because it's not going away. So. Um, I just wanted to try my best to keep going for my guys. Left aisle. George Gerba, Washington Times. Michael, 
final minute, you hadn't taken, uh, you've taken only threes to that point, and there's less than 10 seconds left on the shot clock, and you just take your head down from, from the top of the key and drive it all the way to the basket, get the bucket, get the foul shot. What, just take me through that, that process to, it felt like a turning point there to get you guys back a little bit more of a lead in the final minute. Yeah, I mean, I was just, I was just taking what the defense was really giving me, honestly. Um, they were pressing out. I kind of just, he went one way, tried to make a crossover and go make a play. If, if they stepped up, I was going to kick it, but I felt like I could take a layup and I just tried to do what I could to finish the play. And if I can do a quick one for Casey, you had the primary assignment on Jack Golkey tonight, um, able to lock him down. You guys did a lot of great defensive switching. From growing up in D.C., I'm curious if there's anybody that, that you've played that, was, that you've seen uh, in your career that's been a shooter like that, that type of ability? Uh, no. Um, I, I <laughs> never played anyone who could shoot at that caliber. Um, you know, one thing that Jack does, he always uh, he tests your awareness because um, he's always moving. And um, in order to kind of slow him down, you just got to be in shape. And you just kind of, like I said, you just got to be aware of where he is of all times. And he tested that. And um, But it wasn't just me. It was a team effort. You know, JT guarded him. And, you know, Horn, Mike, you know, everyone was kind of doing their best to kind of slow him down. We got two, we got time for two more for student athletes. Right aisle and then left over here. Bailey Tucker, College Basketball Review. This is for all of you. But like Coach Keats said earlier, people didn't expect you to be in this position. So what's your message to those people who didn't expect to see NC State make it to the Sweet 16? DJ, you want to start and work your way down? Uh, well, I, I've be been nice. saying it. Be yeah. nice. I've been saying it, you know, welcome back. You know, they didn't really believe in us. And, you know, they probably still don't. But that doesn't matter to us. We're just going to stay together. Um, if you're supporting us, thank you. If not, that's what it is. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing, honestly, is just no matter what the outside noise is, we got to believe in ourselves. And I think that's what we've been doing to this point since before the ACC tournament. And we kind of left everything in the past. And we had to take one game at a time. And I think that's what we've been doing now. The coaches have been pre preparing us really well. And, you know, we've been kind of taking that message and trying to apply it to the floor. So, I mean, if people are with us, it's great. If they're not, it is what it is. But um, we'll take all the support we can get. But at the same time, we have to just let, rely on the people, you know, in the locker room to go out there and compete. Got thing there, Casey? <laughs> um, yeah, I agree. I mean, just, uh, you know, we're going to stay connected no matter what goes on on the outside. Um, you know, for us, it's been a roller coaster of emotions. But, uh you know, we, we've seen a lot, and, um, you know, we're not going nowhere. We're here. Last question for student athletes right here on the left. Will Graves, AP, for all you guys, how does a team that won eight games from January 1st to the end of the regular season win seven games in 12 days to get to the Sweet 16? DJ, you want to start? Uh, I think that's what March is about. You know, um, some teams got here by winning their conference just like us, and, you know, that doesn't mean they're a bad team. You know, um, we executed, and... Sure, we just we just kept playing for each other. I think that's all it was about for. Uh, yeah, I would say sticking together. Honestly, throughout all the tough times, it's things aren't going to be always be pretty, and things aren't always going to go your way. But if we can stick together with the the guys you're out there competing with, I think that's going to go a long way. When times are not favorable, it's just, you got to be able to pick each other up and you know just keep competing. At the end of the day, it's you compete with the five guys on the court, and the guys are playing with you. Casey. Uh, yeah, all, what all those guys said is true, but uh, but also just our resources that we have, um, our strength coach, um, our doctors that travel with us, you know, massage, like everything um, to help us um, be ready to play and, and not get tired. Uh, you know, that's something that's definitely given us advantage in March. All right, thank you. All right, once again, please raise your hand. Someone will we'll come around with the microphone. Questions for Coach Keats. Front right. Uh, Colby Trotter, technician. Obviously, Casey said earlier it was a team effort to guard Jack Olkey tonight. What did you think of how your guys did? I know it's a hard job chasing that guy around. And you limited, to, limited him to a decent amount of shots. He just made most of them. So what did you think of, the, of their job? Well, he's dangerous, and you you, ha you got to pay so much attention to him. And then when you look at the fact that, you know, Trey Townsend is really good, so they've got a kind of a, you know, inside-out punch with those two guys who could really shoot the basketball. And, I mean, what he's done in the last couple of days is simply impressive. You know, um, I want to say, what am I, 16 threes in two days. And so you got to pay so much attention to him. And, and here's what makes him really special is, 
they know that he can shoot the ball, and so they do a great job of running a lot of plays for him and running off of stagger screens and, you know, trying to get elevator screens for him. And I thought our guys did a really good job. You know, we knew that we couldn't stop him from taking threes, but we wanted to make him make, take tough threes and shoot a bad percentage, and I thought we did a great job with that. Brooke, front right. Brooke Pryor, ESPN. Kevin, in addition to DJ having 24 points, I think you had four other scorers in double figures. Just what does that say about the balance of your offense and the way that these guys kind of complement what DJ's doing down low? You know, that's the strength of our team. And at one point, it wasn't. You know, we were, you know, early on, it was either DJ Horn or maybe um, JT could have a good night. I think, you know, one of the things, if you ask and you look back at those the seven games that we won in a row, is I think that everyone has really stepped up in different ways. And, you know, every night there's someone else. Um, you know, DJ Horn, I mean, DJ Burns was great tonight. Um, you know, I thought Michael, even though he might not have impacted the game much, much with his scoring, he had a career high in assist at eight. And so that's kind of what makes us special right now. That makes us tough to guard because on any given night, one of these guys can lead us in scoring. Front left. Charlie Gribble, 24-7 Sports. Coach, talk about um, just how crucial it was losing DR and Middlebrooks there in the overtime period and the decision to sub in Jay and Taylor, who had a big three in those close minutes. Yeah, we were running out of players. I looked around. I was going to put Levi Watkins in at one point. Uh, we needed another post guy. Uh, you know, we had some calls that didn't go our way. And, and I told you before, like I said earlier, Trey Townsend had a great game. I mean, 30 points and 13 rebounds, and he is as good as advertised. Uh, but it, it got tough at the end because we didn't have anyone else that we could throw in the game. And so we decided to go four guards. And it actually helped us on the offensive end because um, Jaden Taylor was able to knock down that three in the corner. Back left aisle. Mike Osti, Yard Barker in Pittsburgh Sports Now. Coach, what does it say or do you have any message to the rest of the country about the conference, about the ACC, just for the fact that so much is made on which conference is better and it's impossible really to equate, especially in a tournament like March Madness, but you struggled for a while in January, February, and yet you're here in the Sweet 16 and the ACC kind of had a rough road to getting teams in the tournament this year. Yeah, I think it's been a common theme for three years and, and it's crazy because when we do meaning we as uh, the ACC, we get teams in the, in the tournament, the few five that we're getting in pretty much play pretty well. And so we try to send that message early on before we got to Selection Sunday that we play well once we get in the tournament. Um, but we got to figure it out. Uh, our league is really good. You know, one of the reasons why we're playing good basketball is because we're battle tested. You know, a lot of times, um, a lot is put on the non-conference. You play 11 games. So let's say we play five or six power five games and then we have five or six bye games. They're good. They'll challenge you. But you can't tell me that that's more challenging than playing 20 ACC games and playing at great venues, Pittsburgh, as you're here, and going to different places and being battle tested. So we got to figure it out. Um, we're deserving. You know, we're, our, our league's going to go to 18 teams, and I think we should be able to get 10 teams in. And that's up to us as coaches. We got to figure out, you know, do we need to win more games in November? How do you schedule? We got to do a lot of different things. But we got a great league. I think it's the best league in college basketball. Back to Brooke. DJ, DJ said earlier that he made the choice to not get in his feelings when fouls weren't being called. He's getting hacked down low. Is that something that he's always been able to do, or has he evolved as a player to be able to not get in his feelings and play through those circumstances? You know, he's, he's probably – it's so tough to referee him, and he probably gets fouled more than anybody. And I'm not saying these officials or any other officials. Um, so he's got no choice. You know, very seldom do you see him get to the free throw line when you could make a case that every other possession that he touches the basketball – he gets fouled. And so we've talked about the maturity of it. It's like, what are you going to do? I mean, you, you, know, you don't like it and get a technical foul. Just move on and just play through contact. And I think that's where he's matured. And it, it didn't happen just this year. It started last year. And then he's matured to the point where he's like, I'm not going to get any calls. Just play through all contact. That's going to be the last question right here, Red Isle. Bailey Tucker, College Basketball Review. Coach, since you guys were the 10th seed in the ACC tournament, where do you think that your team has grown the most between now and then? You talk about since we were the, the 10th seed in the ACC, I just think we, we've come together. It, like, we, we've been a good team all year long. 
we just hadn't stacked games. We hadn't stacked opportunities. Uh, you think about, you know, I, a lot of people put so much into our last four games. And they didn't talk about our first six games. We were five and one. We had a tough schedule. And when we look back at it, it wasn't so much uh, about the teams that we played, which were very good. It's what we didn't do. You look at those four games, we were in all of those games to have the opportunity to win them. Um, and I just think we just – we have cut down on our mistakes. And most of them are on the defensive end. This team can score the basketball. But defensively, we, you know, we were, a, we were a mess at times. We – ball screen coverage wasn't well. Um, uh, our assistant coaches have done a great job with scouting. Uh, we wasn't doing a great job of comprehending scouting reports, and now we're doing it. And I think the, one of the biggest thing is we believe and trust in one another. You know, they, if you're not having a good night, then they, you got to trust your brother beside you. And I think that's one of the things that we matured in. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Once again, we are going to start with an opening statement from the head coach, followed with questions for the student athletes. At the conclusion of the questions for the student athletes, they'll be dismissed. Then questions for the head coach can start. Please raise your hand, and someone will come around with a microphone. Please give your name and media affiliation. If you're joining on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. We will address questions in the room first and go to Zoom if time allows. Now we'll start with an opening statement from Oakland's head coach, Greg Campy. Um, well, I guess it's been a couple nights ago. It's hard because it's over, right? And it's going to end this way for every team but one in this tournament. The hard part for me is I've done this a long time, and I'm going to tell you, I, in this day and age of kids leaving and the lack of respect for authority and the, you know, 
what about me? What can I make? And all the people telling everybody that's how you should be. You know, the way we're going. To have a team like I had, 15 guys that just cared about each other, 15 guys that just cared about the outcome of the team and the pride they had to be part of a team and the way they joked and hung around and, you know, every game all through the year, somebody else, somebody else it was, you know, nobody cared who it was. They just were glad that we were together. When things went bad, we picked each other up and then we won games and we won games and close games after close games, I guess it ends with a close loss. But um, it, it was just a joy in this day and age to walk into the office every day and know that I'm lucky I get to go in that gym and be with this, this group of kids. And that's probably what hurts the most right now is I know that that's over. And uh, man, I'm gonna miss that. Just a reminder, no video cameras are permitted. Thank you. Representing the Oakland student athletes are Trey Townsend and Jack Golke. Questions for the student athletes. Front right. As for Jack and Jerry DePaula, the Tribune of Pittsburgh, what was it like uh, having those guys follow you everywhere you went? It seemed like every time you turned around, uh, either more or somebody else was on top of you. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty used to that at this point. So uh, obviously you want to get open shots, but uh, that's, that's pretty typical throughout the season. Um, I've seen that, so it's, it's something I've worked on. Back aisle. Matthew Thedros, Duke Hayne Duke. This question is for both of you as the season's coming to an end. Can you just speak on this locker room and this relationship and the brotherhood you guys have and how that feels as it coming to an end? Trey, you want to start? Yeah, I mean, that's the locker room and the culture that we have on this team is what got us this far. You know, we've, we've every single, mostly every single game we've played this year has been, you know, within single digits, final score. So, it's it's just a special group of guys, as Camp said, every single day coming to practice. It's it's just joy, and everyone's happy to be able to play basketball one through 15, 15 no matter if you're a red shirt, you know, walk on. It, it it didn't matter. Everyone was happy to be there and just be around each other. So that's obviously probably the most, you know, sad thing about this whole thing coming to an end. Obviously, losing, losing sucks, but this group of guys, it's the closeness of everyone and knowing this whole group won't play basketball together again is, is going to sting for a while. But... This whole journey, I've been trying to tell everyone to appreciate every single moment, every single, you know, time we're together because these are the best years of your life, and I, I think everyone's tried to make the most of that, and I'm sure everyone will have a great relationship after this after this season and for the rest of our lives. Jack, yeah, I mean, at the beginning of the season, uh, we all kind of just set out and banded together, and we wanted to make this a special season for Trey, Chris, and Blake. They they built the program here with Coach Campy and. Um, I think we did that to the best of our abilities. Obviously, like Trey said, we, we really wanted to win today. Um, I wanted to go to Dallas really bad. All the guys wanted to go to Dallas really bad. But I told them in the locker room, uh, the thing I wanted the most really was to see everyone on, at practice on Monday. That's, that's the thing I'm going to miss the most is just seeing my guys every single day. But I know, like Trey said, we'll, we'll stay together. Brooke, front right. Brooke Pryor, ESPN. Trey, how do you describe kind of the whirlwind, the roller coaster of the last 72 hours from arriving in Pittsburgh to being on the podium right now? I mean, Campy said before the season even started that this tournament is nothing like you could ever imagine. And once we got here, that, that was true. It lived up to the hype. And I just, like I said in the last question, I just really wanted everyone to appreciate every single moment of this whole experience because not everyone gets to play in this tournament and for our sake not everyone gets to win a game in this tournament so obviously we lost today but I still want to remember every everything that I've that I've gone through with these guys I'm sure everyone will it's that's been the biggest thing is just appreciating every moment like I said these are the best years of your life and I'm I think we've been making the most of you know our time here and I, I hope we left a everlasting mark on this this program and this university Back left aisle. Mike, Mike Oste, Yard Barker. Jack, we've kind of got to know you a lot over the last couple of days on national shows, NAL deals, things like that. Number one, what's something that you could tell us to help us get to know your teammate Trey a little bit more? We know his game, but maybe not him as much as a person. And then to kind of piggyback off of what you were just saying, where do you hope the future of this program goes? Because Coach talked about 
the ring could say conference champ. It could say Sweet 16. It could say NCAA tournament yeah. appearance. It's not going to say Sweet 16, but where do you hope the future of the program goes? Uh, just for Trey, I mean, he's just been, a, from what I know, learning about before I got here, but then what I've experienced since I got here, just an absolute pillar of this program. Um, you can't tell the history of Oakland basketball without Trey Townsend. And uh, as much as he's a great basketball player, he's an even better friend and, and man. And he's, uh, I think he's going to grow up to be a, a tremendous father and a tremendous husband. Um, so I, I can't say enough good things about Trey. Um, for this program, uh, I got faith that Coach Campy's going to keep building and, and this program is going to keep getting better. I think this is just the start for, for this era of the program. Uh, he's got some tremendous players coming back, and uh, they're going to be even better next year, I think. We have time for a couple more for the student athletes. Left, middle. Will Graves, AP. Guys, you were in here the other night saying we're not pretenders. We're, we're for, do you think you proved that tonight? And because of that, does that make it just that much a little more difficult? Because it wasn't just like some feel-good story where you won a game and then the second game it, you know, got away from you. You were in it to the last, you know, last minutes. Yeah, you know, pretty much like I said earlier, every single game of the season for us has been close, and it just shows how tough we are as a team and how determined we are to win, and how you know much confidence we have in every single player. And you know, I hope that we prove that the last game that we won wasn't a fluke. We're able to compete with anyone in the country, and. You know, we just played a really good team. Like I've been saying, every single team in this tournament is really good. If you make it here, you're a talented group of guys. And it just didn't go our way tonight. But my guys battled to the very end. And no matter how, you know, what happened out there, I just knew they were going to give max effort and, you know, have no regrets after the game was over. Yeah. Um, I don't think any of us regret the confidence that we had going into our first game and the confidence we had going into our second game. Um, obviously, the result's not what we wanted it to be. but. We put in all the preparation throughout the entire season with our coaching staff and our teammates to to put ourselves in a position to win this game today, and, and we just didn't. Uh, there were some plays that we didn't make, but like Trey said, it wasn't an effort thing or a want to thing. Uh, basketball just uh, can give you a lot, but it can take a lot at the same time. So uh, that's all, that's really all it boils down to. Our last two for student athletes right here, right aisle, and then right in there. Go. Yeah. Hey guys, Tony Garcia, Detroit Free Press. Uh, obviously in this moment, very tough, but there will be a day that you're not crying because it's over, but you're smiling because it happened, right? I don't know if you can mentally try to get there right now, but it, it kind of felt like Steph Curry when you had the ball at times, Jack, just sort of the way people were, I mean, had been talking about you and Trey, 30 points on national TV. Can you guys, is there any part of you that can reflect on, on what you guys really just did? I mean, I think you start. Um, for me, I... I've been through so much basketball and, and a lot of college basketball seasons, and this was probably the most enjoyable one I've ever had, and I've had a bunch of amazing ones. But um, having gone through that many, I feel like I kind of, throughout this whole season, I've kind of been reflecting on it as it goes and uh, just trying to appreciate it as much as possible. And I think I did that, and I think our, our team did that as well. Um, so obviously, like you said, it is very disappointing that it's over, but I think we did a really good job of soaking up our time with each other and, and making the absolute most of it. Our last question to the right. Uh, Neil Rule with Oakland Radio and uh, either of you, Jack or Trey. Has it set in, it probably hasn't yet, but has it set in that you guys have created some of the best moments in the history of Oakland University, like as a whole, not just Oakland basketball, but Oakland University? I mean, I'm just glad and you know proud of this team for what we've done, like you said, for this university. I think people now hopefully we'll know that we're not in California and we're, you know, we're from Michigan now. Um, and, you know, for me, I always wanted to come here and hang banners and make these memories and, you know, put Oakland on the map. And to say that, you know, we did that, it's such a special thing. And I'm just so happy, if, you know, for my guys to do it with this group of guys, it was that much more special, like with Blake and Chris, who, who've been here since my freshman year over this whole time. It's, it means that much more. But like you said, I'm, I'm proud for what we've done for this university and, you know, put it on the map, essentially. Jack? Yeah, I've uh, I've just learned so much in so little time from all the all the guys, and um, I couldn't be happier for Coach Campy and uh, like I said before, Trey, Chris, and Blake. Those those four uh, four men are just tremendous, and the four years that they all had together to build this program just I think means so much to the university from what I've seen in, in my year, and I really wish I was would have been here earlier or had more time here because it's. It's a tremendous experience.
All right, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, question, questions for Coach Campy. Back middle. Michael Grady, Duquesne Duke. Uh, Coach, you mentioned Thursday night that there was a moment previously in your career that had it happened would have changed Oakland basketball. This was obviously before the Kentucky game. Was there a moment like that tonight that you think was similar? Is there any one thing that you can look back on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, a referee's call in the game we were talking about before, and the uh, ball rolled around the rim and didn't go in. Uh, tonight, it's me. I mean, we didn't. Uh, I blame myself. We didn't get. We got the ball with 17 seconds to go, and we didn't get a shot. There's only one person to blame for that. That's me, and I got to sit here and live with that now because we didn't get a shot. And you know, I've been in that position. If I've coached 1,300 games, which I think is probably top four or five ever, been in that position hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, and to have it happen in the most important game that Oakland's ever played, uh, that's that's. Yeah, I'll carry this with me the rest of my life. That, that's just terrible that we didn't get a shot. So that's on me. Questions for Coach? Right aisle. Bailey Tucker, College Basketball Review. Coach, I think the bulk of the country was really rooting for your team tonight. <laughs> Do you have a message for those people who probably didn't even know where Oakland was before this, who were just really cheering you guys on? Well, I think, I hope what they saw was what I talked about in my opening statement. Uh, you know, I think we're good for college basketball. I think I think we really were. I think I think there's 360 some Division One coaches. That's all the jobs there are in the country. And I would say a lot of those guys are envious, not of Oakland or not of what we do or not of me, but of our team, and not the winning or losing but having that as a team because what I talked about is in this day is really unusual. And so I think that we probably, that re was reflected. And I mean, I don't think you can play harder than we play. I really don't. There were more floor burns, more dives on the floor, more, I don't think, you know, I think we played pretty smart too. And you know, Dean Smith who, most people today, you know, he's fading away into people's memories. But Dean Smith, you know, for all the coaches in the world that read his books and know who he is, he had a mon mantra of play hard, play smart, and play as one. And I think we epitomize that. I really do. And I think that's probably why. And then, obviously, when you got a guy that's going to be a, a insurance salesman scoring 60 points in two games and killing it. I mean, when he, I don't know if I've ever seen, I know in my life I've never put a sub in the game and saw a place go nuts with, you know, three minutes into a game with, you know, what does this place seat? 18,000 or whatever it seats, I don't know. But that's the large, that was the large, loud, loudest roar of the night when he went in three minutes into the game and then he caught it and made it and it was electric. And I mean, the legend of Jack Golke is going <laughs> to, it's going to, go on and Oakland's going to be associated with that. And then you saw Trey Townsend is, I mean, Trey Townsend's a pro. He's a pro. He proved it tonight. You know, everybody says, well, isn't he a little undersized? And he went out and made threes tonight. He, did, he does what he has to do. We could have shot a lot of threes all year, but he, nobody could guard him in there at our, at our level. I think he got fouled a lot tonight. You know, I think he got fouled a lot tonight. How many free throws did he shoot? Eight. Uh, I, if, and I, if that was in our league and that happened, he would have shot 20 tonight because that's the only way to stop him is to, you know, to knock him to the ground. And that, so it is what it is. But I hope that's what they saw. Left aisle. Coach Cameron Hoover, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette here. Uh, Trey obviously had a great game tonight. Can you just sort of talk about uh, his performance? And also coming out uh, into the second half, was that kind of a coaching adjustment to try to play through him more or was he just kind of reading the defense and taking what they gave him? No, the, 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 you got to give credit. If you want to look at this from a, a coach's mind or a analytical, not analytical, but a coaching look at it, 
I felt they knew, we run a lot of sets. That play card I have has 77 sets on it, and I probably had 45 primed for tonight. That's hard in a one-day prep. So Kevin was very smart. He knows we don't have a true point guard. So what they did early in the game is they picked us up full court and made us earn the court, and then the time, they shortened our time, and they also kept us from getting the ball to the top of the key and running our sets. So the shot clock's winding down and, and we're jacking threes. We made some, three point game at halftime. So the adjustment we made is that we wanted to catch the ball off a rebound or if they scored and fly it up the floor and get it into past the hash mark, the 27 foot line. We wanted to advance the ball at that. Maybe we could touch the paint, but if not, get it by that and then run our sets. And you saw much more fluidity out of us in the second half, and we were able to get the ball to Trey. I mean, there, there, was, there were two key plays in the game. Um, and, you know, the game was called the same both ways. It's, I'm not saying that it, it was wrong. I'm just saying it was a key play. And that is we had a, the two-point lead in the ball, and we ran a little baseline play that we've run for years. And he got the ball, and the guy just pushed him out of bounds. And they didn't call it. And he threw the ball to Lampman in the corner, and Lampman shot an air ball. If we score on that possession, it would been the first time in the whole game we'd have a two-possession two lead. I think that would have changed the outcome of the game. And then the second, which is probably the biggest play of the game, was, again, we got a two-point lead. We get a kid take the shot from the corner, and it, the ball never even got 10, 10 feet two in the air. I think it was 10 foot in the air. And there's a minute something to go. And if that ball hits the rim and goes where it should have gone, we get the rebound, we're in really good position. Instead, it hits right in the front of the rim and comes right down to the big guy and he lays it in. You know, we were fronting the big guy. And the only rebound he was going to get is if it hit the rim and came straight down. <laughs> and that's what happens. Those are the bounces of the game. So we still had our chance. We still had the ball. We got to stop. You know, they had the ball with 50 seconds to go. We got to stop. We live on our defense, and we did what we had to do, and then we didn't get a shot off. I still don't – I got to see it. I, I still don't know because we saw it on the scoreboard, and it sure looked like it was our ball. I know 18,000 people thought it was our ball, but they said they saw some other view of it and that the kid hit it, but my guy's fingertip or something was still on it or something. So we didn't get, you know, two seconds. We didn't get the last shot. And, again, I'm going to live with that. It's, it's going to be hard. Trust me, it's going to be hard. Probably got time for two more front and right. Uh, Coach uh, <clears throat> Jerry DePaul of Pittsburgh Trip. First of all, thanks for telling your story so well and your school story so well this week. Thank you. Uh, I was wondering uh, your intentions on that last play. The ball went out of bounds and you couldn't take a shot. What, what was your plan on that last possession? The ball was getting to Townsend on the, uh, facing the basket, the left elbow. And he was supposed to rip and drive. And he was either going to be the hero or he was going to go to the free throw line or they weren't going to call it. One of those three things was going to happen. He was going to rip and score. The kid guarding him had four fouls, you know, but I'm sure the kid, they weren't going to let him get a good look. They'd rather have him try and make a free throw. Um, we took too long to get in it. They, they came and denied the entry pass, and our guard with the ball dribble entried instead. And by then, we, you know, it's my fault because we had 17 seconds and we didn't want to go until 10 or 12. If we would have gone at 17, we could have handled that, and that was the mistake. That's the mistake that our coach made, and it's, it's a big one. Questions for Coach? Thank you, Coach. Thank you. We really, we really appreciate everything. Um, it's hard to get here, guys, from a mid-major. It's hard to get here, so it's a tough one, but thank you.